Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, thank you so much for watching the last one. Uh, I know it was only a couple of days ago, but I just thought, well, let's just get another quick one in. Yeah. All right, so um, first of all, like and subscribe if you like this content and uh, be sure to join the Discord as well, link in description. Let's move on. Okay, so uh, last time we looked at how to write a, a quartet. So really exposed piece. Um, I've got the piece up here, as you can see, and yeah, it's, it's only violin, violin two, viola, cello. I'll play it for you now very, very quickly, just so you can hear it. So um, as you can hear, that's a little bit more refined than before. And this video, what I'm going to actually do is just show you the small little things that I did inside Sign Player to make this sound as good as it is. Okay, so I haven't uh, really talk, talked about uh, Tableau Strings. It's really good. I think it's getting a, quite a bad rap. For the money, it's really, really nice. Uh, so when you open this up, like straight out the box, I would say that... The cello and viola sound wonderful. They really do. Um, however, everything else sounds a bit naff. So I think a lot of people go away from, from hearing demos of this and they think, well, no, it's not for me. Um, however, you know, just listening to the demo that I did there, it didn't take long at all. It took me about half an hour to write the piece and then it was another 15 minutes to, to you know, tinker. <laughs> And uh, the main things I've done, so first of all, we're going to go down to here, down to this little transport in the bottom right hand corner. All right, so here you, you got volume, you've got your purge and release thing, you know, typical stuff. Round robins, you can either pick random or, um, or a new note reset. But this is where the ma magic is. So this is showing you the three notes, the three round robins. That's um, your modulation. But then here, you've got Niente and Soft Lower Layer. I would have them on. Those are really, really good for adding a little bit more depth. Yeah, so that just means that it's using some jiggery-pokery in the background, some special stuff um, to bring up the volume and lower the volume when you use your modulation wheel. Um, and the Soft Lower Layer actually starts at a lower dynamic. So... You know, that's really, really good. I, I tend to just switch them on. They're pretty much on all the time. This cut off filter, I don't generally use in this library, but that would be really, really good for like sound design kind of stuff. If you were going to use it, then I would say it'd be really good for like louder passages where you might have a first and a second violin and uh, you want the first violin to take over in one place. So, you know, more so, so then you put the cut off filter on and then bring down your modulation and it'll cut off the the top end a little bit um whereas if you start to cut off even more then it's it's just acting as a cut off filter you know you're losing too much of the note sometimes but it has its uses i have used it a few times so that's the first thing now the second thing i do is here i go to the mixer and these are all of the mic positions now we've heard loads about like loads of different manufacturers using mic positions and on default, the AB mic and the surround are off. And you get your tree all the way up, your spot all the way up, and your ambient all the way up. And generally doesn't sound very good. Um, I'm not a huge fan of tree microphones, so I've pulled that down. I do like them, but I just don't think they sound great up front. Um, that's a personal thing you choose. But the thing that I would do straight away is I would just pull this spot mic down. Um, and what I'll do is solo 
um, oops, the first violin. And what I'm going to do, I'll pull that up, um, pull the tree mic up. I'll turn that ambient all the way down. The, the AB, sorry, keep on saying that. And you can listen to how it sounds with this. It's going to sound better than it would because I've also got um, I've got modulation there going on, and I've also, if I just change this region over, I've got some volume automation as well. Okay. So it already sounds quite nice. But what had happened if I just turn this spot mic down, I had it to about nine, I think, ish. Um, and oh, you'll just hear straight away, it'll, it just sets it back in the room so it's not so in your face. Yeah, and now I'm going to turn down this tree mic and I'll bring this ambient up to where I had it and you'll just hear the difference. So there, just by doing that, what it's doing is it's, I've set it in the room yeah, and that's what I think the tree mic is really good for. It's a good room sound. Um, and then I've taken that AB, which is a little bit more of a wet. I think it's, you know, it's it's just set back a little bit further in the room. And then you've already got the ambient up as well. And it's just blending the different um, lengths of the room together to create that sound. Um, so then when, say, I did the, the second violin in, you get this sound. And you'll hear that um, for the first and second violin, I haven't gone for a typical layout. Most of the time you'd have the violin one in the front and the violin two, uh, you know, slightly further back. But I've just opted to do it the opposite way around here, which is absolutely fine. You can do that. And that's mainly because on this violin two here, what you actually have is you have more of the melody. So you see, see there you've got this. Da, 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 yeah, and then you've you know you've got more um here, and then you've got these long sustain notes on the first violin, um, and that is because I wanted the first violin to be set forward in the mix, just because that is accompanying the cello. You can see here that I've got harmony in the cello that's supporting them. Um, in other parts, um, the viola is just pretty much doing what the violin is doing. Here it gets a little bit crazy, and that is because there's interchange between the viola and the cello. Okay, so movement there between between your instruments is going to add realism as well. And finally, your automation. You will notice all of my automation lines are different. Now this is paramount for when you are doing this kind of writing because you've only got four voices and you need to make each individual voice sound as um, intricate as you can without it sounding so far away from the piece. So there are parts that I do not want um, to be present and that's where they've gone down and others have gone up. Um, and then I've had um, parts where they're all kind of working together like there and you know at the beginning. And then I've had huge contrasting parts as well, where you know the the these violins go down, so that's that line here, and then they come back up for this section. But then the um, viola here is takes over. I would say you know that is that, and that's that's I would say that's your first point of uh, dynamics, yeah, volume change. So it's changing the timbre a little bit, but it's also changing that dynamic range. And then if we just change over to the tracks, 
here as well, you can see that there is, again, more difference. You know, you can see that when some are going up, others are going down, um, you know, and, and there's, there's just a lot of contrast. And then there's parts where they're moving together in unison. So, you know, these are things that you need to think about. Volume, how you've set up your player, you know, if you wanted to put even more contrast in this, which I haven't done, I've put these into a group. Yeah, so um, say I wanted the beginning to be quiet. I'll bring it down here. I can bring up for the second part. I'll bring it down again for this part and I'll bring it up again here, bring it down again, bring it up a little bit. And then I'm just gonna tape it up taper it off you can do that as well and then you've got three um separate volume automation lines and that this is how that would sound So there, there's just so much more dynamic range. And maybe, you know, the beginning was a little bit quiet. It should have started there. Just so there's, you know, there's there's some kind of um, fluidity to the, to, the, to the range. And that is how I get my tracks to have um, as much dynamic range as they can. Because the thing you need to remember is that your loudest part is only as strong as your quietest part. Okay, so that's the end of this. And um, yeah, see you later. Thank you very much for um, listening and yeah, stay tuned for the next.